but the Roughnecks. The two newspapers and, of course, the television stations in this city have done a great job of trying to get everybody up to speed on the National Lacrosse League and the Roughnecks. There's a ceremonial face-off going on right now as these two teams get ready to square off. Commissioner Jim Jennings, along with Brad Bannister, who is the owner of the team. Bannister making the official face-off. Darren Hillier and Tracy Kaluski. Check that again. That is Bruce All Alexander, the, the uh, captain of the Roughnecks. Bannister on the left, and that was Jennings on the right. Let's take a look at the starting goalies. Brought to you by Wendy's. Two new bacon Swiss combos. Try one today and one tomorrow. For the Express, it's Curtis Palador. He has got a 15 0.35 goals against average with Columbus last year. Two and six in net for Columbus. At the other end, it will be Derek Collins. He's an Ontario boy who's come west. He was one and two with Buffalo last year. That doesn't include his time with Ottawa, and he'd rather forget that. That's right. There weren't too many wins in Ottawa last year. This, Both these goalies, too, uh, Polidor scored 30 assists in the summer league. He can pass the ball, and so, so can Collins. He's got 17 assists in the summer. There's Terry Sanderson. He is the head coach of the Montreal Express. And Chris Hall will be handling. He is uh, best known as the coach of the Victoria Shamrocks in the Western Lacrosse Association. Got the call late after training camp had opened up to take over as the coach and is certainly done a nifty little job getting the Roughnecks up to speed. He's decided that it's going to be run and gun. And both teams have very experienced coaching staff. Terry Sanderson is one of the most intense coaches I know. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Chris Hall, he's, he's had great success with Victoria. Last year was the first time a, a team had gone undefeated in the Western Lacrosse Association. Victoria went 19-0-1. Unfortunately, they never made it all the way. They lost in the finals of the playoffs against Coquitlam and went on to win the Man Cup. But he's still a great coach. Kevin Melnick, the Roughnecks coach and GM, at least at the start of the franchise, was released a couple of months ago, and Hall had to come in. And Bannister took over as general manager, started to make some deals. He wanted to make sure that he had some experience on this team, that it wasn't oh. a true they made some team. Great, great deals. It really brought, brought the boys home. These guys are really happy to be playing for this team. I think the Calgary fans are going to love what they see out here. Kaptanchik to take the opening face off against MacArthur. Set to go in Calgary, and this one is underway. Very quickly, Roughnecks into white. Big hit, penalty coming up. So very quickly, Montreal in trouble as Prepchuk had his helmet removed. Yeah, Prepchuk, we're going to be hearing a lot from him as he put his helmet back on. He's staying on for the power play. He scored 14 goals last year. He's expecting to get a lot more than that this year. I think he would be unhappy if you got anything less than 30. He's the hidden gem on this team. Yeah, he's got a lot of upside. Scored 20 points in two exhibition games for Calgary. Power play now for the Roughnecks. Very early in the first quarter. Good ball movement. Shot scores! First goal for the Roughnecks belongs to Kilbride. John Kilbride. Talked about hidden gems. John Kilbride. Kilbride, he's a local Calgary boy who's got great offensive skills. NLL teams have been looking for him for a long time, and he's got his own business here, never wanted to go anywhere. Now he's back. They're thrilled to have him. You can see why there on that outside shot. Power play pays off quickly for Calgary, 22 seconds into the opening quarter. Montreal in the dark sweater. It's dark jerseys and starting back. Peter Locke in across, double team, brings it out high. Moving in, the shot, and saved by Collins by Amy Kane. Oh, Possession oh, belongs oh, to Montreal. Played just 40 seconds of the opening quarter. They're all trying to counter. Coming in, shot, Kaluski saved by Collins. Loose ball. After it, they express, they control. Kaluski circles around. Trying to set the up. Shot comes in. Collins got a piece of that. Montreal again working. Collins had the short side shut down. 
Calgary now. Ready to start back. Panos waits for the change from the Calgary bench. Panos over, trying a little shot there with Caleb Toth. You'll see that play quite often with Coach Toth charging down. All alone, a 2 on 0 for the Express coming in. Shot scores! Bruce Codd, equalizer. And this was a great play by Polidor. We talked about him earlier, scored. 30 assists in the summer league last year playing in WLA, WLA for Burnaby. And watch here how quickly he gets the ball up. They catch Calgary in a bad change. Bruce Codd, who's one of Terry Sanderson's favorite players, plays for him in the summer. Just aim for that corner. Nice shot. Bruce Codd's not a big guy, but Terry says he's got a big heart out there. The kind of guy Terry likes. 1-1 the score at 1-28. And that's one thing Calgary's going to have to get used to. Most of these guys, WLA players, the, the transition in this league from offense to defense and vice versa is a lot quicker than the summer leagues in Ontario. Coming in again, trying to work it out. The Express trying to set it up. Working against the crowd. Shot comes in, saved by Collins. I was Ted Dowling. Expect big things from him. He's got a great shot, a quick release. John Cable's pass was knocked down. Coming back now, the Roughnecks moving in. Shot goes wide. Loose ball in front outside the crease. They chase it down into the corner. Off the glass. Katanchik trying to move something with the ball. Swings around. To the near side. Intercepted by the Express. They come back. Express has it chopped away. That was MacArthur losing the ball. Caleb Toth couldn't control. Toth at mid-floor. With directions, comes low into the corner. Chuck tries to move around. He gets hit and then gets an extra shot from MacArthur. So MacArthur's going to watch both Toth and Chuck. Long lead pass, deep into the zone. That was Kaluski. And a penalty coming up. Oh, I think it's just a possession call. Very quickly, we've got Kaluski yattering there with Calgary's Ryan Campbell. When the ball is loose, you're supposed to play the ball. You can't hit a guy when the ball is on the floor. Kaluski swings around, tried to shovel it off. Comes to Collins. Flips it ahead. Prepchuk's on the floor again. You're going to see Prepchuk and Tolz on a lot of offensive situations. Earlier, Pano, shot scores! Top corner, what a move by Chris Pano. That was a great move by Chris Pano. Calgary got in a steal from Philadelphia. Chris Pano was one of the top scorers in the Western League last summer, originally from Long Island. And you're going to see his offensive skills here. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. There you're going to see fakes the outside shot. Oh, nice move and a nice shot to finish it off. Chris Panos played for Philadelphia last year, but he actually wanted to take the season off. His wife, wife and him had their first child. He was talked into coming back late in the season, so his stats are negligible last year. I think two games and one goal. But he's a, a, a former All-Star in this league. Great player. They got him for a ninth-round draft choice. Married a girl from Victoria. Loves being out here. 2-1 the score, Roughnecks leading. Katanchik on the draw against MacArthur. Ball is picked up, off he goes. Charges in, the shot goes wide. Near side, Montreal controlling. Lead pass, MacArthur, a little trouble. Pass, he's tied up there by Chris Pratt. Pratt, up the board, Cable. He'll wait for a little help. Cable. Flip off and the change comes up. Dancing around. Rob Colville. The shot away save. Montreal coming back. Kane. Down the wing. With it now is Harrison. Harrison looking for a little help. Kaluski. Kaluski waits, waits, shot saved by Collins, loose ball. Who's after it? Scooping it up, the Express, good work go by Scott Frizzell. 
He leveled his man. Oh, he's getting Giles. a penalty for it. So Giles paid the price, but it will be a Montreal power play. And you're taught from day one of lacrosse when the ball is down, play the ball. And this is what hit from behind. Potentially a dangerous play near the boards. And Matt Giles did the right thing going, going for the ball. Now we're going to see Montreal's power play. Watch it work around. Very patient right now. Shot comes in by Harrison, saved by Collins. They worked outside only. They didn't even penetrate. Dean Harrison's got a strong shot. And he's got the green light to take it whenever he gets a chance. Dean played the last three years with the Toronto Rock. And he's going to like it here. He's played with Terry Sanderson in the summer many years, winning a Man Cup and three Minto Cups in junior. And Terry likes Dean, and he's going to give him a lot of power play work. Kilbride has the first goal of the game. It came for Calgary on the power play. Shot comes in. It goes wide. Calgary, nice job using up the clock. Well, you know, Montreal just lets them. This is one of the things that I, I don't like about the NLL, that the shot clock still exists when you're shorthanded. In the summer league, there is no shot clock when you're shorthanded. If the team lets you, you can kill, kill the two minutes. So essentially in this league, the defense, the power plant defense doesn't even try to get the ball back. They just let it kill 30 seconds. So it's kind of 30 seconds of dead time. Over and back by the Express, and now Pratt will start things off for the Roughnecks. You'll see Montreal again. We'll just try to keep them to the outside. They're not even going to try to get the ball back. Just keep them to the outside. So turns away from a double team. Loses the ball. Bounces towards it very quickly. Valador makes the save. Valador. Oh, watch out. He keeps going. He's going to need a transfer on the LRT. I love when goalies do that. Oh, Dowling lost the ball. Ball is loose. Chopping for it. Montreal with 35 seconds left. In the power play, they really haven't done yeah. much with it. Now, that looked a little sloppy with Dowling, but he was actually trying to hit and bolt trick. Kaluski's shot goes wide off the end boards. Scooped up, though, very quickly by Harrison. Harrison trying to cycle around. Shot saved by Collins. And in the crease, oh, Dowling oh, dancing up. And Ryan Campbell's going to get a penalty. Ryan Campbell and uh, Scott Frizzle probably two of the top defensive guys on Calgary and they're both sitting in the box. You're going to see Dowling has got such a quick release. He is tough to cover because usually he doesn't have the ball. He gets open quickly. He's got a good first step and a quick release. Ten seconds with the two-man advantage. A little back pass moving in. Shot Collins makes the save. Still trying to control now. Kicking it ahead. Amy Keynes couldn't control. Comes back, though. Working it now. Henhock. Shot. Collins to save. Keynes fights for it. Knocks it away. One penalty has come to a close. By South. Starts back down the floor. Spins. Taking a look. 127 left in the power play. As Campbell serving up the rest of his time. Calgary trying to get set to kill the penalty. Going to keep everything wide. Knocked away. Prep check over his shoulder by South. And time expires, and they just fire the ball into the crowd. And now they're going to cause for delay of game against Montreal. Whether they're, they're not calling it, but Montreal's asking for it. He threw the ball out, and they're complaining about that. But, uh, Paul Ravery's not going to call it this time. He'll probably give them a warning. Moving the ball around, trying to get a shot away. They score! Picking a quarter. That was a pretty goal by Jason Henhock. And it's tied at two. That was a very nice shot. Jason Henhock, the only guy to come right out of Junior A on this Montreal team. Dean Harrison sets him up. We, we talked about it before, not working inside. If you have a great outside shot, you just take it. And what's great about that on the power play, if you establish the outside shot, the defense has to spread out, and that's when the inside game comes to. Shots on goal, Montreal 12, Calgary 4, and they've scored on two of them. Jason Henhock played for Six Nations Junior A last year, scored 29 goals, 38 assists for 67 points, 19 games. Six Nations is where Kim Squires comes from, so if he's going to have a career anything like Kim Squires, expect a lot from this guy. Joe Hilt's on the floor now, and he's somebody that has to 
have his game step up, working through a crowd. Kaluski dancing, turning, back over the shoulder shot. It went well wide. Here's Hiltz. Dumps it into the corner as time expires. Uh, Joe Hiltz actually uh, for a short while held the record for most assists in the season in this league. His first year in Washington three years ago, but uh, they've increased the number of games. The records are being broken every year. Trying to work it in. Coming in, moving ahead. Shot good save by Palador. He stayed with the shooter all the way. Yeah, they, they got to watch. A lot of these guys are not playing the ball. They're loose balls we talked about earlier. You got to go for the ball if you want a chance at it. You hit a guy in the back, you're either going to get a penalty or just give them the ball. Coming in, and another save by Palador. Prepchuk across the oh, way. That was a nice interception. Picked off pretty. Yeah, Palador's got a good stick. Express, changing things up, Dowling, switches, digs down low, takes the hit, still holds on to the ball. Another penalty is coming. Loose ball, Montreal controlling. Crosby drops it back up top. Moving down low, shot, bounces away. Collins may have got just enough of that. Dowling in the corner, takes the hit. Hiltz into the corner. Dowling, now in front, they score! Matt Giles. Montreal in the lead now with the goal by Giles. And you know, you can give a big assist to Jason Crosby, whether he got one or not. That ball was almost turned over, and he picked up a key loose ball to enable them to pull their goalie. Matt Giles parked himself in front of the net. Another former Toronto Rock player scores a big goal. And what these guys like... Mac Giles, Dean Harrison. The Toronto Rock was such a stacked team. These guys sometimes didn't get all the floor time they loved to play. They like playing there, but here they're going to have bigger roles and they're going to enjoy that. Scramble for the loose ball. MacArthur couldn't get to it. Bice out. Bice out comes in. Takes one hit, tries to turn away, looks for an open man. Can't find any room. 14 seconds left. Shot comes in. And Palador waits. Tries the long outlet. Oh, just a little too far for Sean Parnell. Yellow Hawk back cable. Cable to the side. Bounces off the stick of toast. This ball scooped up by Montreal. Coming back, Kaluski. Oh, takes a big shot. Panos as he was heading off. Kaluski trying to get everything set. Ten minutes into the first quarter. 3-2 Express. Coming around is Hiltz. His shot. Saved by Collins. Loose ball in the crease. And Collins scoops it up. A little extra work, too, by Dean Harrison to try to get the ball loose. Back Campbell. Dishes off. Saved by Palador. Loose ball. They score! All right, John Kilbride. Tied at three. This is good stick work, but it comes off the big shot by Caleb Toth. You're going to see Caleb Toth. This is his first shot of the game, and we know he's got a big, heavy one. No angle. A cross handed shot. He's a left shooter. Shooting it with his hands crossed over to the right. Kilbride is a guy we talked about earlier. He's got great offensive skills. The Calgary boy they talked out of retirement. I'm glad to have him. 3-3 the score. Opening quarter. Loose ball. Scooped up by Calgary. Hilliard turning away from checking. Able to get the pass away. Colville looks down low. Back up to the middle of the pass, didn't work. Loose ball picked up by Calgary. 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Bicep trying to skip away, comes in all alone. Bicep, good save by Balador. Loose ball controlled by Locke. He starts back, Locke's finding some room. Locke coming in, a little two on one. The pass scores! 
pretty goal as Locke waited for Joe Hill. Very pretty goal, and they caught Calgary in a bad change. That's the second transition goal that Montreal has scored on a slow change. Now you're going to see Palador make the big save here, but watch. As they go up the floor, the Calgary guys are running to the bench, but not quick enough. He's just running up the middle there, Peter Locke, and he sees Hiltz going with him. Hiltz has got great finish. It almost looks like he was in the crease, but it happened so fast, it's hard to, hard to tell. Derek Collins really had to choose on which way he was going, decided to stay with Locke, dished off quickly, and we've got a break in the action with 4.05 remaining in the opening quarter. And this first quarter of NLL action is brought to you by hotjobs.ca. Onward, upward. Chris Hall with his team down by a goal, trying to explain. We've noticed this too with Chris Hall too, that he's been very patient and very, you know, descriptive of what he wants his players to do. This is a really smart play by Peter Locke, and Terry Sanderson has given most of his defensive players the green light to run whenever they get a chance. Let's check in with Roger Million. All right, Rob, thanks very much. Scott, it's been tough to get back to on defense. What's been the problem, and how are you working on it? Well, changes aren't coming off fast enough. Our guys are kind of getting stuck up on offense, and they're pressing us, and they're moving the ball up the floor really well, actually, on off-bench side. So we just got to start sending the guys to the bench a lot faster. Our guys got to be coming off on offense, and we just got to be bolting out the back. All right, Scott Frizzell, thanks very much. Scott Frizzell, thanks, Rob. Another Molson Export bench report by Roger Millions. I couldn't have said it better. That's exactly what's happening. They're too slow getting to the bench, and they're well aware of it, and I'm sure that's what Chris Hall was talking to the team about. That's two out of the four goals scored because of slow changes, and I wonder how much of that is because the pace in this league compared to the pace in the Canadian game in uh, the WLA or the OLA. And that was something that Ben Prepchuk told us yesterday, is that he's trying to explain to especially those that haven't played in the NLL before that the pace is definitely quicker. It is, and, and, and that's the, the big difference that guys say. You have to do everything quicker, react different, quicker, think quicker. And they've been burned on it twice. Cable, all by himself, waiting for a change by the Roughnecks. They're down by a goal. Cable dishes off near side. The shot came in, and that bounced. That was a bad shot by Panos, well wide. That was a pretty play. Coming in, another shot off the end board. Cable tried to get to it, couldn't. It is controlled by Bruce Codd. He's got a goal this afternoon. Jason Crosby charges in. The pass saved by Collins. That from Ted Dowling. Ted Dowling really got open there, but Collins read the, Collins read the play beautifully. And a hold being called by the referee Paul Ravery, Ron Crisato, and Dwayne Zielenberg. Looks like Captain Bruce Alexander, the big 6'5", 250-pounder, is going off not too happy about it here we're gonna see let's see if he's got a good argument uh, you, see, you know what it is his glove grabbed the sweater for a second there there's nothing else he did wrong except when you see that sweater slide up <laughs> usually it's a clue. that was a standard move by you though wasn't it yeah I think they were stick them talk about naming the penalty after me Shanahan stick them Kaluski working high we're got another Montreal power play score Kaluski oh that was a nice shot a power play goal makes it 5-3 Montreal. And, and nothing, nothing fancy about this. It's got a good outside shot. Kluski, he's got a great underhand shot. It just gets a little opening here. I think that Calgary defender got pulled too far away towards the this right here. He's, he goes too far on this shooter and gives Kluski too much of an opening to step in. When you can step in there, it's, Good percentage, a good shooter's gonna score from there. A good shoot, not, not guys like me there. Moving good in shooter. now, there's another chance. Good save by Collins, that against Aiken. Coming back, getting beaten up, Peter Locke. MacArthur waits for the rest of the Express to change. And then he'll head to the bench. New troops come on. Side. The Express trying to dig in. They score! What a nice diving shot by Jason Crosby. And Montreal showing their offensive punch. Take a 6-3 lead. And when we talked earlier about quick pace. All you need to, to do is get open for a second. You're going to watch Crosby here. 
He only gets, you see him cutting like he's gonna throw a pick. Quick pick, and to the net. Beautiful play. Kept his feet outside the crease and made it count. Now we can't hear what they're saying, but there was a switch done. Calgary, somebody was covering Crosby when he threw the pick, they called a switch and he went right to the net. Oh, the pick and roll. Thrown back to Montreal's Curtis Palador. He'll start things off. So Montreal's done a nice job offensively with six goals. Kaluski skips and then waits. And there's a penalty coming up again to Calgary. The extra man on the floor. Kaluski pointing. They've scored one with the delay. And the extra man down and that's the whistle and I think Montreal got a little surprised ran out of time on the shot clock 30 second shot clock violation Montreal yeah, Cable got oh, caught for the hold now they've got to stay out of the penalty box there's essentially three power play goals because one was on the delayed penalty and that's the difference in the game so far the Giles goal was on the delay. Henhock and Kaluski have scored power play markers, and it's 6-3. to three. 2010 shots on goal in favor of the Express. Moving in, Kaluski up high. The dish up, scores! Great bounce shot by Dean Harrison, and another power play goal by the Express. It's 7-3. to three. And again, it's their fourth odd man goal. You're going to see it. Every goal has been... An outside shot other than uh, Matt Giles, the inside one. Here's an outside shot through a screen. And this is really tough for the man short team. When the outside shots start going in, Watch they've got to spread out even more. Let's check in with Roger Millions. Frustration here, great frustration at the Calgary bench over penalties. They're trying to calm down and get settled in there because if they don't, they're already down four and they're very worried about it. So trying to gain composure here at the bench, Rob. And that was something they were worried about, the nerves in that first game. Home floor. And right now they're down 7-3. to three. Trying to work out of the corner. Montreal trying to add to a four-goal lead. They do! There's number five for the five-goal lead. Great shot coming in by Jason Crosby, his second of the quarter. And I think you might see... A, a possible goaltending change here. It's another outside shot. And even just to shake up the Calgary team. Yes, I think uh, we see Matt King. So coming out now is their backup goalie, Matt King. Matt King is from Victoria. Had a 742 goals against with Victoria Shamrocks of the WLA. And this is a situation they didn't want to get in. Not that they don't have confidence in Matt King, but he's a junior A goalie. We're going to see this goal here at Crosby. It's another outside shot. Just a, yeah, there's nothing really set up. Just an outside shot through a screen. 116 left in the opening quarter at already 11 goals. Yeah, Derek's got to stop those outside shots to give these guys a chance. And you're going to see Montreal is going to continue to take lots of shots here. If Matt King might be nervous, they want to pounce on him. Dowling swings in, moves in, he tests King and scores! It didn't take long there. I'd like to see that again and see if he was in the crease. But uh, just nice one-on-one, -on -one, very quick. They're going to be going right out of... 10 seconds after the goalie chain. Yeah, let's see. One on one. Let's. I want to see his feet in the crease. Yes. Yeah, he's in the crease. Toes are not supposed to be in. Yep. He stepped on the line, but not over the line. And, oh boy, he got away with one. Calgary down by six in the opening quarter. Need a goal. They need to get their offense going to keep the ball out of their end for a while. Coming in, Calgary shot off the end board. Valador comes out and he'll lead it out. Quick pass, and again trying to take advantage of the chain. Aiken. Oh my! And they score again. And a goal coming from Amy Kane. So everybody getting something going. I think it's time for a timeout. 
You're going to see Aitken. Good transition. I mean, this. It's not. Uh, it's not a great scoring chance, but it seems like everything's going in now. I mean, he's faced two shots. They can't put the blame on him, full blame on him, but they got to come up with some big saves or they have to have some longer offensive sequences. Aitken found Keynes, and Keynes got his first. 10-3, final minute of the opening quarter. Calgary on lead pass. Krepchuk. Coming in, moves in, a bounce shot. We're going to get a power, play, get a power play coming up. And it is whistled down. We'll see Calgary now on the power play. Prepchuk got grabbed just as he was trying to get a shot away. Today's first quarter was brought to you by hotjobs.ca. Onward, upward. And MacArthur got caught. You're going to see a penalty. You're going to see a hold by MacArthur. Yeah, free arm definitely. And Calgary needs the break. They've got to score a goal. Five seconds left. Shot came in. Loose ball. Time running out. Another shot. It will bounce around, and that will end the first quarter. Oh, Montreal. Wow. 10-3. Sportsnet Ontario, home of the Raptors. With the Sony Mini Disc Walkman, you can record from the net. So wherever you go, your downloads go with you. His Mountain Dew in serious jeopardy, this generally harmless male will defend his domain with basic animal instinct. A fierce battle rages. Yet in the end, to the victor go the spoils. Hey man, how you feeling? Not bad. Until next time, do the do. It orders pizza. It has an FM stereo so you can listen to music while waiting for pizza. It two ways friends to come over for pizza. It has voice activated dialing so you can order more pizza. Pizza. Without putting down your pizza. The Motorola V.120. Enjoy it with pizza. Climb every mountain, fall every stream, follow every rainbow. Here you find your dream. Yamaha's ultimate ATV sale. 7.9% financing and a whole lot more. See dealer for details. Welcome back to Writing Cramp Central. 10-3, entering the second quarter. The Montreal Express leading the Calgary Roughnecks. Roughnecks ran into some rough goaltending and just too much Montreal on the offensive side. 10-3, the opening quarter. The stats are pretty even other than the shots. Loose balls, 13 each. Face off, 6-5 for Montreal, but the shots on net, Montreal outshot them. 24 to 11. Final five minutes. Montreal put together seven straight goals to take the lead. And moving now on the power play. Shot scores! That's the way to start off the second quarter for Calgary. 
Did they ever need a quick goal? Kilbride getting his third of the game already. Yep, as you said, Rob, they definitely needed that. They have to get their crowd back into the game. You can see as watch as he gets a little bit of room, just a sh high shot, top corner. Kilbride's brought his game so far. We've got him here for the offense. He's been shooting well. Express trying to get it right back. Coming in, the shot and the save. High kick. Prep shot down low. Wakes tries the dish and the shot over Palador. For those that don't know lacrosse too well, six goals is not a lot in the lacrosse game, especially when you have the firepower that Calgary has. Dwayne Zielenberg got caught is the technical referee. He found the Calgary change a little too quick, too many men on the floor, and it is a Montreal power play. And we'll see if Calgary changes up their short man a bit, as I think Montreal's been very successful with the outside shot. Montreal's got to spread out their defense a little bit more. Today's second quarter is brought to you by Wendy's. Two new bacon Swiss combos. Try one today and one tomorrow. Quick shot. Saved by King. Calgary trying to build. Oh, very close. Frizzle was trying to, Frizzell rather, was trying to get set free. Coming back now for Montreal is Henhock. Across the floor, the pass. Kaluski's up high. He likes to stay up high to get things going. Henhock to Kaluski again. The shot to the side. He was looking for Dowling. Battle in behind. Loose ball. Montreal comes in. Pays the price. Double teaming there is Kaluski. Campbell on him. And time runs out. It is. And now we've got a little extra. Kaluski was not wanting to give up against Ryan Campbell. That's definitely a mismatch in size. Saw Ryan Campbell in the warm-up. He's a big boy. Speaking of big, there's Bruce Alexander, 6'5". Panos. Uh, I'll bet you if Caleb Toth gets that ball, he's going to the net. We're watching Caleb Toth now. Walder. Moving the ball, 50 seconds in the power play, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Calgary's got to get a shot away, time running out now, five. They move, shot goes off the end glass. And time runs out. Coming up immediately following this afternoon's game, it is Hockey Central Saturday. Darren Gregor, Nick Kiprio, Scott Morrison all on hand. Will set up a very busy evening in the NHL. Shot comes in. Great bounce shot by Dean Harrison. 11 to 4, getting that goal back. Harrison. Dean Harrison gets his second goal of the game. Once again, outside shot. You see, they move the ball around, gets a little opening, good hard shot. This is this is so tough right now. Calgary's going through got to stay out of the penalty box. When the shooting is hot, sometimes you just got to stay out of the box. Express lead by seven. Let's join Roger Million. Rob, one thing that's absolutely evident is the two benches. The Montreal Express are cool and calm. Terry Sanderson behind the bench saying, guys, keep it up. The Calgary bench really trying to get things figured out, and that's a big difference in this game. And a little more experience on the Montreal bench, too, especially with a lot of the Columbus team going north to Montreal. So that helps. Yeah, and I think a start for Calgary is really just try to stay out of the penalty box. They've had four, well, essentially five power play goals on them. Trying to turn away. Calgary gets a shot away. Scores! There we go. Dan Krepchuk. He's one of the guys they're going to be counting on this year. And he shows, Ben Krepchuk shows that Montreal is not the only team with good outside shooters. Looking up at his own replay here to see where he was shooting. Nice shot. Watch this play. He wants this ball badly. He's in a good, like the high slot in hockey. Goal scores. They get the ball there. They're putting on the net. Panos, a nice quick pass to him, and Prepchuk wasted no time. Prepchuk again. Watch this man move. Prepchuk comes in. Saved by Palador. 
Rep Chuck says he's not afraid to shoot from a long range or try to come in and try to mesmerize the goaltender. And he says he likes to go one-on-one, -on -one too. So you see, if they get the chance to isolate him, he'll go one-on-one -on, -one on the defense. Hiltz. A high shot by Kaluski bounces into the crowd. Looks like it must have bounced off a Calgary player before it went out. The referee is calling that, so Montreal will get the ball back. Montreal can't control. Loose ball, Kaluski. Kaluski being watched by Alexander. And he flipped it over top, trying to find Matt Giles. Controlling now with Gisormo. Back go. come Calgary. Roughnecks making a change. Cable, the pass, moving in, trying to dig around over the shoulder. That was Panos. Little flip shot, almost worked. Shot there, Palador very quickly jumps on it. Caught. Turning away from the checking. He's got 10 seconds to get across the line. He does. He pays the price. Coming in. Shot saved by King. Controlling now. Henhock. Dished it off to the corner. Trying to dance around. Amy Keynes in front. Shot scores. Oh. That one coming from Ted Dowling. This is a beautiful. This is typical Ted Dowling. He just hides away until the defender doesn't pay attention for a second. Everybody's watching. Amy Kane's in here. Ted Dowling's going to get open for one second. That's all. He's hardly even open. All he needs is his stick open, and you can see the frustration from the Calgary defender. He's, uh, he's almost on top of him. But that's Ted Dowling's game. He's not... He's not so dangerous when he has the ball. It's when he doesn't have the ball that he's so dangerous. And that's why he scored 45 goals to lead the league two years ago. Steve Penny. The Hills. Let's check in with Roger Millions. All right, Rob, Ted Dowling saying he's not surprised at all. They were confident heading in. They would be great on offense, and they sure have been. Well, 12 goals worth, and we've still got 10 minutes left in the opening half. Dowling second of the game. Calgary working from behind the goal. Dancing through the shot. That goes high. Loose ball. MacArthur goes chasing after it. MacArthur on the run. Trying to work a two-on-one. Couldn't get the pass away. He had Jason Crosby. Crosby feeds it back to Harrison. Harrison will flip it away. And new troops come out. Dowling. Against the defender, moves in, dives. Not going to get it, and Dowling was in the crease. Long lead pass. Wolder couldn't control it, but he takes it off the end glass. Wolder. He'll wait. Slowing the tempo down a little bit. Trying to spin over. Working off the pick, the shot comes in. Again, another shot. Palador was quick to make the save. Ball in the crease, everybody after it. Score, Montreal 12, Roughnecks 5. We'll come back with more National Lacrosse on Rogers Sportsnet. The best thing about the Coors Light Silver Sweet Football Party is... You don't have to play football to get in. See details at a participating bar near you. No purchase necessary must be legal drinking age. Are you ready for some football? Can anybody find me somebody to love? He works hard every day of my life. I work to like my bones at the end. At the end of the day, I take home my hard-earned pay oh, on my own. Somebody, 
you in part by Speedy Auto Service, it's Speedy or somebody, by Doritos, the loudest crunch, and by Motorola, intelligence is everywhere. Let's join Roger Millions, he's at the bench. All right, Rob, thanks very much. Ken Dowling, you have two in this one. You're up 12 to 5. Execution has been letter perfect for your team. Yeah, it's been great. First, I got to say hi to my little daughter, Trinity, <laughs> and my wife, Tiffany. You know, um, yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Uh, we played really well. You know, it's gonna what's gonna make us a, a show whether we worked really hard is how we come out in the second half and continue this uh, this first half. A new dad and a new team. Things couldn't be much better than that. Can't be better than that. Nope. All right, Ken Dowling, and this has been another Molson Export Bench Report. Dowling and his wife welcoming the birth of Trinity just five days ago. Right now, very happy to see the team ahead by seven. And Ted's been one of the big reasons why. Sometimes Calgary, they think they're playing good defense, and they are, and he gets open for a second, and he makes you pay. Trying to work the ball around. Eight seconds left. Derek Collins is back in goal for the Calgary Roughnecks. King just gave him a break, maybe just to give Collins a chance to get his mind sorted out again after seven goals broke a 3-3 game open to a 10-3 advantage for the Express. Charging back is Bruce Codd in across the line. Codd dishes. Pass doesn't work to Kaluski. Loose ball. Going in to help out is Bysout. Scramble. Worked out in front. All alone. And the shot doesn't work from Dowling. Another shot comes in, goes wide. Dowling again manages to get open. A long lead. That was intended for Chris Pratt. And hot. Seven minutes played in the second quarter. Good work by Montreal. Oh, they get a shot away. Great diving shot. Dowling spent a lot of time in the Calgary crease this afternoon. Amy Kane. Comes out, moves in, shot off the crossbar. Yeah, Derek Collins beat on that shot. Rough neck start back. Penalty is coming. Collins goes to the bench. By South. Knocked away. Loose ball. Hen Hawk on it. Squirts out. Panos. Goes out with Toth. Prep Chuck. By South will head to the bench. Got the extra attacker as soon as By South gets changed up. Third leg, now the Calgary fans getting on the team, trying to get a shot away, one second left. And the clock comes to a, an end, and it will be a Calgary power play. Well, many of the fans showing that they're hockey fans, they're shouting the familiar, shoot, shoot. shoot. Yet in lacrosse, you don't want it. You pull your goalie, you want to set it up. Use that extra man. We're going to see a penalty here and a big slash as Calgary's bringing it up the floor. Henhock got caught coming with the two-hander. Looks like a timeout's being called by Calgary. The Roughnecks have called a timeout to discuss the power play. Down by seven. They're going to push for an opportunity here. Uh, thanks very much, Rob. And Terry Sanderson was just saying, guys, when we get the ball back, we're going to push for a goal here. It's a critical time. He gets a feeling that momentum may be changing a little bit, and he's focusing on his guys. He's going to ask him to do the same thing. Thank you, Roger. And, and Terry, it's a great move on his part. The, moment, the momentum is not changing, but he wants to react before it does. And, and you know they get a power play goal here. If he if he can kill this, Montreal can kill this. This will really crush their spirits. Calgary has scored two goals in a row, all game. They've tried to react to the Montreal offense, and that's been difficult. They haven't been able to respond when Montreal scored. And they got to get Caleb Toth into the play. He's only had one shot this game. Well, they're changing up the power play here. This is different. Moving in front. There's Toth. Try to come in. The shot comes up high to the side. And that hit Peter Locke. Locke loses it. But there to help out was Bruce Codd. Codd starts back down the floor. Trying to get the quick break going. Dumps it into the corner. Trying to take advantage of the change. Collins comes out and then flips it over his shoulder. 127. Calgary power play. Calgary's got to do a better job of retrieving the loose balls on the power play. Montreal out hustled them for that last loose ball. You outman them, you got to try to try harder to get it. 
Krepchuk and Toth working on the left side. Back up top to Walder. Shot scores! Now you got a great ball. I talked a little bit earlier about Caleb Toth has to get more shots. But what we're going to see here is that they don't want to let him shoot. But that opens it up for Jace Mulder, who takes a good shot here. You're going to see here, Brad MacArthur's playing up on Toth, and they've been told, don't let that guy shoot. But it opens up a big hole for Jason Mulder. Scores a nice shot. That's a trio they want to be effective. Mulder, Toth, and Prepchuk. And with the attention on Toth and Prepchuk, that left Mulder alone up high. Three Alberta boys. Older from Calgary played for New York last seven years. Shot by Cod off the end glass. Montreal, change it up, Tracy Kaluski. Captain of the Express. Coming in, snapped it away, just rolled through. Collins almost made the save, but again, Montreal comes right back with a goal after the Roughneck score. 13 to 6. And, and th this one really hurts, and this one he's got to have. It's just an outside shot, but you got to stop those when you get a piece of it. They, they have not got the goaltending so far today, Calgary. They need to get a little bit of hot goaltending so they can go on a roll. Battle right now has been won by the Gunners. For Montreal, and they come back again. Shot over the shoulder. High, but the rebound bounced wide again. Aiken, and then Locke, not able to get it in. And Calgary lost their composure on that faceoff. I, I was shocked to see three guys open on a breakaway. Cable coming back. Shot. That goes wild, but the rebound, they score! Roughnecks trying to get back into this game. Colville. That one actually came from a bad play. That outside shot, Colville gets the rebound. Here you're gonna see, this is not, this is a shot the wrong way, but Colville is an opportunist here, jumps in, puts in the rebound. Here you can see Cable shoots one about six feet wide. Colville takes advantage of it. Rock next goal, start number 73, Rock Colville. Go downstairs and join Roger Millian. Roger? All right, Rob. Terry Sanderson all of a sudden has become very concerned, asking Tracy Kaluski to make sure if they're on offense, if there's a shot not there, to make sure the defense does not stay on the floor too long. He's become very concerned about how their defensive play is going here in the second quarter. Thanks, Roger. And that's been something that Terry Sanderson's been working on. Because this team can score in bunches, sometimes they forget their defensive responsibility. And it's, and it's not even just the responsibilities. If you've got your defense on for a minute or so, work hard, get the ball back. You don't want your offense going up and throwing the ball away. You want to give your defense a rest. Are the Roughnecks ready to try to make a move back? They're down by six in the opening half. has a dilemma. How to decide which sandwich to introduce, the chicken bacon Swiss or the bacon Swiss cheeseburger? Well, he's going to do it scientifically. This is chicken, tails is the cheeseburger. Both are topped with hickory smoked bacon and processed Swiss. One's on a quarter pound of fresh beef, the other's on Wendy's whole seasoned chicken breast filet. Introducing both. Wendy's new bacon Swiss cheeseburger and chicken bacon Swiss. For girls and boys, it's a fact. In every Wendy's kids meal, Grinch toys are back. Before sitting down to watch your favorite team on Saturday, join Darren Drager, Nick Kiprio, Scott Morrison, and Christine Simpson for an in-depth review of the night's action and much more. Hockey Central Saturday, tonight at 6. Two experienced lacrosse coaches. Chris Hall spent time with Victoria. Terry Sanderson has been in the NLL and has also 
been the coach at Brampton. Busy man both seasons. And coming up after Hockey Central Saturday. Good look at the NHL story. Quick shot by Calgary as Calgary tries to string a couple of goals together. Change of possession. And Calgary's actually outscored Montreal 4-3 this quarter, but they, they got to go on a run. And they got to get a few big saves from Derek Collins if they want to go on that run. It all feeds off that. One big save, come back, use the offense, and get back in again. Thir Working along the boards. Alexander tries to sweep the ball out and does. And everybody knows, both coaches know, if Calgary can finish strong this half, it's a whole new game. In Montreal, that's what Terry Sanderson's worried about. Cable passes off deep into the corner. Calgary, very deliberate. Lots of time on the shot clock still. Wolder in, shot saved by Palador. Rebound picked up by Locke. Long lead pass, here they come again. John Parnell now, shot, score! Everybody getting into the act for Montreal. There, now there's no two ways about this one. This is just a bad, bad goal. In fact, I, I was going to say that this was a bad shot. We're going to see it come from the other end. And you're going to see they miss the net. Montreal's going to get this, or Calgary, yeah, Montreal's going to get this loose ball, throw it up the floor. Wrong side, wrong hand. This was actually what Terry Sanderson said he doesn't want his team doing, taking a quick shot when they don't have a good scoring opportunity. He had no angle on the wrong side. Collins is out again. King is back in again. Sean Parnell's good defensive player, but he's not a real offensive threat. He led the Ontario Lacrosse Association in penalties last summer. Got a little extra going below with Rob Colville, and now helmet toss. This is some good old-fashioned Canadian lacrosse. Not much really happened. Heading to the penalty box. And this is Scott Forbes in Montreal. Rob Colville. Scott Forbes from Owen Sound. He's an electrician who played for Brampton for Coach Terry Sanderson. He can also handle the rough stuff. Colville's actually more of an offensive player. Scored that last goal for Calgary. Matching Miners. Caleb Toth moves in in the creek over the shoulder. And the arm goes up on the official Paul Ravery for the grab on Toth. Now it's a chance for the Calgary Roughnecks to get back into this game. You know, every time you go to the net, there's a chance good things are going to happen. We haven't seen too much of Caleb Toe so far, but I bet we're going to see a big shot soon. Oh, really? That didn't take long. How's that for a big shot? Bang! A power play goal, and now Calgary starting to chip away. Yeah, that's Kilbride. He's got his fourth goal. We're going to see. Didn't take long. Almost looked like Montreal was waiting for something else to set up. He stepped in. Sometimes defense is waiting to see the ball move around a bit. Kilbride just said, hey, they're going to give me an opening. I'm taking it. Spending all his time concentrating on Prepchuk and, and Toth, but it's been Kilbride who's been the offensive star in the game with four goals. Now, Calgary knows. I mean, for the score is 14-8. They've got, they've had some weak goaltending. They can finish strong here. They can go into halftime with the momentum. They've still outscored Montreal in this half, or this quarter, sorry. There's Matt King taking over now. In goal for Derek Collins. And the one thing I guarantee, Terry Sanderson does not want his team trading goals. That's not the way Terry wants his team to play. Goaltending was going to be very important in this game, especially with as many good shooters. And it has been 
the case where Collins not able to keep up with the onslaught. Now King takes over. Now most of the teams in this league now, the goaltenders are like quarterbacks in the CFL. They pass their first starter, there's a bit of a drop off. Now Calgary trying to add a little more with three minutes remaining in the opening half of play. And it's four on four, which will really open up the offense. Here comes Prepchak, one on one. Save there by Palador. And you'll see that from Prepchak. He's willing to go one on one with the goalie. Oh, Palador looked very composed there. Oh, turned around big time with Bruce caught in front of his own bench. And that was Caleb Toth playing defense, showing that he's pretty comfortable on his own end of the floor too. Giles swinging in, trying to work off. The shot saved by King. Loose ball. Toth knocks down his man. And possession will belong to Montreal. 14-8 the score. 2.32 left in the opening half. Kaluski looking for a little more. He's got two goals. A shot saved by King and he jumps on the loose ball. Alexander. Now Alexander, we're seeing him on some offense. He's primarily been defense so far. Big heavy shot handed by Palador. Look at Palador trying to lead his man out. He does. Jason Crosby scores. That's Crosby's third goal. Now you can't fault goaltender on a breakaway, but what Calgary has not got is any big save so far. Going to see Alexander takes the shot. He's not the fastest guy out here. Crosby has a breakaway, and he's just going to put the shot in. But this is where, if you're a Calgary fan, you're hoping that the goaltender comes up with a big save, boosts the team spirits. That they, they haven't got that yet. I mean, they've let in some weak ones as well. As we get ready for the Mountain Dew halftime report, exactly what then is Chris Hall writing down when he has to talk about how to get back into this game? Montreal getting called for too many men on the floor. So now Ottawa will try to benefit, uh, rather uh, the home team, Calgary team, will try to benefit from that. Well, I, I think what he's hoping that they could score one or two before this half is over so he can say, look, guys, it's not that bad. Because like we said, across, look how many goals. We've got 23 goals already. And they have some explosive players. If they come out here 15-10, I mean, even 15-8, I've seen comebacks. Momentum, there's a lot of momentum in the game of lacrosse. They haven't been outplayed this quarter. They got outplayed for about seven minutes badly. The goaltending the goal has really hurt them of late. But he's got to try to take some positive out. They're going to score a goal here on a 4-3. Moving the ball in, trying to get a shot away. Over the shoulder, the time. Palador makes a oh. big save. That was a vital save. Peter Locke heads back. Locke with Toth now coming back defensively. Locke waiting for a little reinforcement. Over the shoulder, that was Dowling. The shot goes wide. And Rob, that's been a big difference so far. You see Palador's made a couple of big saves there, and Calgary just haven't got those saves yet. Caleb Toth takes a look as the power play gets set. Sometimes a goalie's got to save one, you know, where you think it's going to be a goal, he's got to save one on a breakaway or in close. Toe rifled that high. Palador tries it again. Here's Kaluski. Oh, he couldn't handle the pass. Kaluski almost set free. Loose ball scooped up. Possession belongs to Montreal. 103 left in the second quarter and the opening half of play. First game of the NLL season for the Montreal Express and the Calgary Roughnecks. Dowling. Taking some time. Willing to kill it now. Dowling dives in. Scores! Shorthanded. That really hurts them. I mean, here I thought that Montreal was going to be quite content just to play the outside. Kill some time at the end of the period. But... Dowling will have one, none of that. And the Dowling dies, yeah, yep. pays off. And, and this Dowling is so good at this. You see, he dives across the net. He's hurt them badly. Montreal goal starts by number 16, Ted Dowling, unassisted. Well, Ted Dowling in the keys to the game said we've got to score more than they, well, they've done that in the opening half. That's a pretty uh, Well, I didn't know it was going to be that good at 
key for him. 16-8, a shorthanded goal by Dowling. Montreal in charge right now. Toth winds up, fakes it, shot goes wide. Let Toth walk in. She take the shot. Prep shot. To Toth, they score. Power play goal. That was the biggest opening that they had been giving Toth all game. They've been on him pretty tight. And for some reason, they had backed off. I was surprised he didn't shoot on the earlier sequence. Side of there, he was going to shoot. Probably wasn't as good as a chance as the earlier one. He's got a great shot, as we've all seen before, and he's got to take it. Can you believe it has taken him 29 minutes and 29 seconds to get his first goal of the season? Well, that'll be a lot more, but they've been covering him pretty tight. That's the first time they gave him, him an opening. He changed his position on the power play, too. He was playing the shooter spot on the side earlier on. They moved him to the point spot there. Probably to free him up for the big shot. Folks, time to get a little interactive with the Ask the Pro feature. And on the and the question that was posed on sportsnet.ca, with the net now four, point, four feet nine inches across, it's got to be tough for the goaltender. And being asked of Tracy Kaluski, Michael Lee posing the question, what do you think of the league widening the net? Uh, that's a great question, Michael. Uh, I think one of the major reasons why they wanted to expand the net size was uh, to get more goals uh, for fans. You know, they want to get the fans more involved with the game when obviously the fans are going to get more involved with the goal scored. Uh, for myself, uh, it's going to help me out a great deal. You know, last year I hit a lot of posts, so hopefully those ones that hit the posts are, uh, are going to trickle in. So. And it's, uh, it's good for the other guys, you know, the guys that really aren't really too, too great around the net, you know, they're going to buy a, get a couple of game maybe or even trick the goalie a couple of times. So, yeah, it's a great question, and uh, hopefully it's going to help myself out. Well, it certainly helped the Montreal Express next Thursday. Bruce Alexander will be posed the question. All you have to do is check into sportsnet.ca to pose your question. And Ask the Pros brought to you by Motorola. Intelligence everywhere. Look at Teddy Dowling getting ready to go one-on-one. -on -one. Total isolation. Time running out in the opening half, and there it is, the horn sounds. And right now, I have to think that the Calgary Roughnecks are kind of going, what just happened there? And uh, Tracy Kaluski said it right. With the bigger nets, I'm hoping some of my shots can trickle in. And we saw a few shots trickle in. I think one was Tracy Kaluski. And, and really, I think what's got to hurt the most for Calgary is the goaltending. Has not come up big. And at times, it's been outright bad. And Polidor's made some big saves for Montreal. Not that it's been close. But it has been Montreal in the opening half. They lead 16-9. to nine. <laughs> The second quarter was brought to you by Wendy's. To do bacon Swiss combos. Try one today and one tomorrow. So right now, it's going to be Calgary, and I imagine they'll get an earful from Chris Hall. Let's check in with a man who's probably a little more pleased, and that's Terry Sanderson. He's with Roger Millions. All right, Ralph, thanks very much. Terry, your team really executed very well in the first quarter, part of the second quarter. As you head in with the lead, any concerns at all at this point? Yeah, we're a little concerned about our uh, short man. Uh, they've had five power plays and have executed all five. So, uh, you know, bad penalties. We we got to stay away from that. Uh, overall, though, uh, I mean, we're we're pretty happy with the uh, with the lead. Offensively, we're executing very well. Um, just uh, you know, we just have to tighten up a little bit on defense. You traded goals in that second quarter after scoring a few runs in that first. Is it is it important for this team to come out in quarter number three and get a run together early? Well, the main thing is for us is to stop Calgary from getting a run. You know, we, we've got 16 goals. It's more important for us to worry about their 10th than it is for our 17th. But having said that, you know, I mean, we can't be too tentative either. All right, Terry. Well, congratulations on the first half. Good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. All right, Terry Sanderson, head coach of Montreal. We'll come back now with a Sports Center update in just a few minutes' time. But first of all, we'll tweak. We'll come back later with a Mountain Dew halftime report when we return. Sportsnet Ontario. Be there. Is Mountain Dew in serious jeopardy? This generally harmless male will defend his domain with basic animal instinct. A fierce battle rages. 
Yet in the end, to the victor go the spoils. Hey man, how you feeling? Not bad. Until next time, do the do. Climb every mountain, fall every stream, follow every rainbow. If you find your dream. Yamaha's ultimate ATV sale. 7.9% financing and a whole lot more. See dealer for details. It orders pizza. It has an FM stereo so you can listen to music while waiting for pizza. It two ways friends to come over for pizza. It has voice activated dialing so you can order more pizza. Pizza. Without putting down your pizza. The Motorola V.120. Enjoy it with pizza. Mr. Fletcher, Mr. Smith, heads of Twenty's Chicken Bacon Swiss, tails of Twenty's Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger. Heads. Call in the air. Heads. Uh, tails. Heads. Heads. No, no, heads. Heads. No, I mean tails. Can't decide between Wendy's delicious new Chicken Bacon Swiss and Wendy's delicious new Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger? Each topped with hickory smoked bacon and processed Swiss? Try them both. It's win-win. Hey, fry man, over here. Here you go. For girls and boys, it's a fact. In every Wendy's kids' meal, Grinch toys are back. Hey, Mark McAllister here in the Sportsnet studios. We'll get you back to lacrosse in just a second. But first, we have to fill you in on what happened elsewhere in the world of sports this afternoon. We'll start at Madison Square Garden. Knicks and Bulls, not exactly the classic matchup, but how about that guy? Tyson Chandler, the kid. Finishes off the alley-oop. The Bulls are down by six. And then Howard Isley hits the J for the Knicks. They would go on to win this one, 78-71. Now, after a loss to the New York Islanders last night, the Maple Leafs return home to host the Boston Bruins. For Toronto, it's a chance to stretch their home unbeaten streak to eight games. But more importantly, beat a team with a record over 500 for once. I think it's just a matter of uh, getting everybody together and... Uh, getting some chances and get a couple of ugly goals so uh, obviously there's there's pressure but you, you have to get get it going but uh, can't go overboard you just have to get back to basics and do do what you can we've been in the same boat you know we've been losing the teams uh, you know under 500 and beating the ones over so you know it's uh, sometimes it's just it's you seem to get up for the the better teams and uh, you know I guess the good thing tonight is both of us are above 500 so we should both be ready to go Hockey Central Saturday coming up right after lacrosse. For viewers in Eastern Ontario, stay around for Sports Central. Find out how the Stamps and Bombers felt about playing the big old turf. That's coming up a little later. Now let's get you back to the game. The Mountain Dew Halftime Report is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Yes, it is winter in Calgary, Alberta. Started to snow yesterday evening. Right now, it's a blizzard for Calgary. They are being beaten up 16-9 at the half by the Montreal Express. Bruce Alexander is going to be an important part of the Calgary franchise. His fourth season in the National Cross League, he was picked up from Montreal for first and second round picks. Very important. He had 14 goals, 36 points with Ottawa last season. As we take a look at Bruce Alexander in our Hot Jobs CA player profile onward and upward Bruce Alexander will be vitally important defensively and offensively and he's standing by with Roger Millions all right Rob thanks very much Bruce Alexander with me and Bruce uh, after this first half you guys are trying to regroup a little bit but I guess that's expected first time out. 
Yeah, I think so. I, I think we're we experiencing some growing pains a little bit out there and getting used to one another. Um, they certainly took advantage of the face-offs, uh, which you know is a big part of this game with possession. So uh, I think we'll have a little better better effort in the second half. In that second quarter, I thought that you stayed out of the penalty box. You regained your composure. Is that what this is all about? This second half, regain that composure, do the things that you have to do to see even get back into it, and maybe come back and take the ball away. Absolutely, because uh, in this game, you can always see the teams are scoring in bunches. So we want to eliminate them doing that and and, and just chip away. I mean, we're we're down a few goals, but uh, but we'll we'll come back. I mean, we've got a, a very young uh, offensive team here. All right, Bruce. Well, good luck in the second half on uh, way back, and congratulations so far. Thank you very much. All right, Bruce Alexander. We'll be back in a few moments' time with much more of the Mountain Dew halftime report from the Saddle Dome in Calgary. And is anyone bringing anything into the country? Just a couple of Team Canada T-shirts. <laughs> and a big old can of whoopah! The only thing better than Team Canada is a Team Canada fan. Now inside every specially marked get-together case, you get 12 Canadian, 12 Coors Light, and one of four Team Canada hockey t-shirts, each from a winning era. Must be legal drinking age. No purchase necessary. I am Talk about buns of oh, steel. Oh. Come to mama, big boy. <laughs> Tostitos, chips, and salsa. Dig in. Let loose. <laughs> Can anybody find me somebody to love? Every day of my life, I work till I ate my bones at the end. At the With the Sony Mini Disc Walkman, you can record from the net. So wherever you go, your downloads go with you. Dave Thomas has a dilemma. How to decide which sandwich to introduce, the chicken bacon Swiss or the bacon Swiss cheeseburger? Well, he's going to do it scientifically. Heads is chicken, tails is the cheeseburger. Both are topped with hickory smoked bacon and processed Swiss. One's on a quarter pound of fresh beef, the other's on Wendy's whole seasoned chicken breast filet. Introducing both. Wendy's new bacon Swiss cheeseburger and chicken bacon Swiss. For girls and boys, it's a fact. In every Wendy's kids meal, Grinch toys are back. Live in the Calgary Roughneck Room, and you know they are listening intently and trying to get everything back and working in the second half. Montreal went on a huge run in the first quarter, scored seven straight goals to take a 10-3 lead. And every time Calgary tries to get back, it has been a struggle. Along with Roger Millions, who's working the floor, I'm uh, Rob Falls with Brian Shanahan. I was, was almost Brian Shanahan. <laughs> I certainly don't want that. As we get ready, we're trying to set up the National Lacrosse League for you. It is expanded by four teams. You're seeing two of the expansion teams this afternoon. Let's take a look at the divisions. In the north, Calgary, Ottawa, Toronto, and Vancouver. And some of the names we'll be calling an awful lot this year. You see Squire and Doyle Squire from Toronto. Squire and Doyle, they're always together. Disher played a great game last week. And we see Toad today. Goundry had a great game for Vancouver last week. In the north, though, Toronto certainly the class uh, of the division. I, I'd say so. The north's got all the Canadian teams except for Montreal, and I'd say Toronto should walk away with that division. In the central division, it squares around this way. Albany, Buffalo, Columbus, Montreal, and Rochester. Names to watch from each one of those teams. You're seeing, of course, Montreal with Tracy Kaluski, but Kilbride has certainly been an impact player. Uh, Josh Sanderson in Albany. Yeah, Josh Sanderson, who's coach uh, Terry Sanderson's son, a uh, great player, going to score some big points. John Tavares is the big name here. He's one of the best lacrosse players that we've seen in the last 20 years. So there's the Central Division, the names to watch there, and the 
final division, the Eastern Division, has all U.S. squads. The expansion, New Jersey Storm, the New York Saints, Philadelphia Wings, and the Washington Power, and some legendary names here. Oh, We've got Colsey right. and Prout from New York, Tom Marichek in Philadelphia, along with Jake Berge, and, of course, the Gate Brothers in Washington. That's right. You can't forget the Gate Brothers, but watch for Gavin Prout. He's a rookie in the league this year. First, first draft choice overall. He's going to score some big points. And, of course, the Gate Brothers, one of the Gate Brothers, is saying this is his final season, and Washington all of a sudden has to be considered uh, a, a favorite. Now, let's uh, put you on the line here. Predictions. You said oh. Toronto in the north. Central, who do you like? Um... Oh, here you're going to see my predictions right uh -oh. here. I'm picking Toronto, Washington to win in the Eastern, Rochester in the Central, and then I think Philly's going to take a wild card spot, Buffalo, and I think Montreal is going to battle it out with Albany and possibly New York. You know, so as it stands right now, you have made no real wild card uh, decisions here. You went with Toronto, you went with Washington, you went with the Power. Hey, Where's your I biggest surprise? I went out on a limb with Montreal here. You know, even, even their coaching staff was surprised I gave them credit for that. <laughs> As it stands though right now, we'll hold you by those, you know that. It has been all Montreal, the Express riding hard, 69 in the Mountain Dew Halftime Report. Tostitos chips and salsa. Dig in. Let loose. been brought to you by Mountain Dew. Do the do. As the Calgary Roughnecks head out trying to get something together, so to the Montreal Express. Let's take a look at the Canon Power Shot of the Half brought to you by Canon. Leaders in digital photography. Astonish yourself. Here we're going to see in the first quarter on the power play, Tracy Kaluski. The defense goes a little bit too far, gives him some room, takes a nice underhand shot. And this was earlier on before the floodgates really opened. Made it 5-3 in the first quarter, and that was part of a seven-goal run that Montreal went on to take a 10-3 first quarter lead. That put the Roughnecks in a deep well, if we can use the terminology, and now they've got to find a way out. Matt King is the goaltender for the Roughnecks now, replacing Derek Collins, who couldn't handle the barrage. 38-29, shots on goal in favor of the Express in the opening half. And coming back, Calgary trying to do something with it. Prep Chuck, one-on-one, -on -one, and his bouncer goes wide. 
Calgary. Calgary can take some positive things to the dressing room from here. As Coach Terry Sanderson of Montreal noted, Calgary's power play was perfect, five for five. They've got to stay out of the box, go to the net a bit more, maybe draw some penalty, penalties like well, Caleb Toast did earlier on. Coming back again, the Roughnecks trying to get squared away, coming in, driving, saved by Polidor. Boy, he was calm. We talked about Caleb Toth being quiet, but uh, he quietly got four assists along with his one goal. So they're going to get on him tight. He can pass the ball off. Hilt waiting for a little help. Dishes off. Kaluski trying to work and set the pickup with Amy Keynes. Working out the, over the shoulder. Oh, what a very good shot by Kaluski. The King didn't bite. He drilled that over the shoulder shot. That's one of the hardest behind the back shots I've ever seen. Almost squeezed through. Coming back now. The Roughnecks trying to set things up, trying to take advantage early in this second half. Coming in, the shot, Palador the save. Loose ball, prep shot. Moves in, near side. The shot comes in off the end glass. Calgary goes after a loose ball, tripped up. Good work on the loose ball by Jace Mulder, and that's a difference than the first half where we saw they were knocking the guy to the board. Here they to take the hit to get that ball back. Calgary holding on. Repchuk down low over the shoulder. Panos misses. But very quickly, Calgary still holds on to possession, trying to work it back down low on the break. Colville to the side. Calgary, eight seconds left. Shot goes in, and look out, this is going to bounce. Panos, Chris Panos has some tricky moves in his arsenal. He manages to get the shots. He's missed a few by just inches. Scored one already. Dowling. He's been busy. He's got three. I'm sure Dowling's name came up in the dressing room talk. Can you stop a cutter like that? Somebody like Dowling, he likes to come across and make the dive, or is it just you've got to hold him up long enough no. that the goalie can keep an eye on him and the defender comes you, back? You know, guys have habits, and Dowling likes to, that's his play. He will rarely come a, across the top. He likes to go down the crease. You've got to cheat on him and force him to go one way. Even watch him here. That's the way he always wants to go. Sometimes you got to take it away, force it to go the other way, but you need backup on a guy like him. It's, it's, it's not a one-on-one -on -one game from a defensive point of view. Three on two, the shot saved by Palador. Palador not starting the ball back until Roughneck was out of the crease. Caught. Coach Terry Sanderson made some good points. He said it's not important right now for them to get the 17 to stop them from getting the 10th. Kaluski turns, takes the shot away. Pass over the shoulder, knocked away. Shot goes wide. Penalty coming. Penalty coming now to the Calgary Roughnecks, and this got them into trouble in the opening half. Yes, Montreal is going to the power play again. Montreal's power play has been four for seven, so they've been pretty good. We're going to see the slash there, right there. It's not the first one he got called on the second one. That's Cable. Big save by Matt King there. Kaluski. Up down to the middle of the shot, and it was knocked away at the last moment. Shot was coming in from Harrison. Up top again to Kaluski. Over the shoulder, Harrison, shot, it's the end glass, in behind the goal, Giles, flips up high, Montreal still controlling, out in front, pass doesn't click to Harrison, and now six seconds left, Harrison comes in, will fire one, King makes the save, loose ball, scooped up by Montreal, shot, and again King the save, this is something Calgary didn't get, it was a, some goaltending early on, and now Matt King has done a solid job to begin the second half. You're right, he's made a few good saves there. Kilbride, he's been busy, four goal. Shot goes in, prep truck turning, shot by Palador. 
Talador is cool, big time. Long lead pass, Kaluski being chopped by Tote. Kaluski with a shot and score! What a beauty, and then gets hammered. You could see why Tracy Kaluski's the captain of this team was the rookie of the year, and they expect big things from him. What control? You're going to see a good pass come from the other end, but watch the ball control by Tracy Kaluski. Watch him protect the ball here. Caleb Toth is all over him. Now watch this shot. Good power. We talked a little bit earlier on about the power he was getting with his over-the-shoulder shot. And watch, watch this. He can't make a, a forehand shot. He totally fools Matt King on this. Nice then he goal. gets sandwiched. Yeah, he did. And, uh, I'm surprised. Oh no, there was a penalty on the play. Ryan Campbell got a penalty for the hit off the play. The double whammy. So the Roughnecks will have to kill a penalty. Steered ahead. Chopped by Alexander. Controlled by Cod. The Roughnecks can't afford to give up the ball like that when they get it. Montreal, very patient. Crosby, dished into the corner, takes the return pass up high to Kaluski. Crosby again, now working on the turn. Kaluski scores and gets nailed again, and now he is hurt. And Montreal is not going to let their captain take punishment like that. Crosby in the middle trying to hog tie his man. This is the home of Rodeo. Crosby and Pratt, one official draped over them. Kaluski still getting up slowly. In fact, he's not getting up at all. Well, another goal by Kaluski. He gets hammered the second straight time. And he gets open just for a second. Let's watch this hit. One here, that one. Now, that's not so much a dirty hit, other than the fact that it's maybe a second or two after the shot. But regardless, your superstar, Tracy Kaluski, your Montreal, you're not going to let them get away with it, even if it's a clean hit. You want to send a message. You, you would like a team to be intimidated, afraid to hit your superstar. We're going to see him. He just slips in for a second. We're going to see in a sec. If the referee gets out of our way, he slips in. The pass from Harrison, the second hit, a little late. And that's a tough spot to get hit if your arm is up. I think that's what happened. So Sanderson will watch with interest as Kaluski gets up. Watch for more floor time from Sean Parnell and Derek Forbes. Today's third quarter is brought to you by Dodge. Grab life by the horns. Kaluski to the bench. You have to send a message that certain guys in your team are untouchable. Now, this isn't a real bad hit, other than, like I said, it was a second or two after. But you want to send a message. If you're Montreal, you want to send a message to Calgary. Be careful with our superstar. Now, if you're Calgary, you, you, you want to continue to do, do that. But let's see who wins this battle, because I'm sure this isn't over. You're either going to see something happen right away, or you're going to see one of the superstars in Calgary get some rough treatment from Montreal. Molson Export National Lacrosse is brought to you in part by Speedy Auto Service. At Speedy, you're a somebody. By Doritos, the loudest crunch. And by Motorola. Intelligence is everywhere. Let's join Roger Millions if he can sort this all out, Roger. Two men for 425 
due to two majors. Chris Pratt gets nailed with a major as well. Two men off for at least 425. Well, this doesn't help the Calgary situation at all. Thank you, Roger. But charging right back in, trying to get something going. The shot, and Palador makes the save. A diving Todd Katantrin. Montreal patiently getting set up. And Kalus, good to see Tracy Kaluski's back on the floor. Here comes Dowling. Digs in behind the goal. Sets up. The pass out. Dowling again over the shoulder. The pass didn't work. Calgary trying to get on the loose ball. So too, Amy Keynes, he's fighting for it along with Kaluski. Kaluski turns. Up with the loose ball. Over his shoulder, Keynes, his shot, and he is knocked down into the corner. Dowling, digging for it, and submarine there was Cazell. Calgary controls, here's Alexander. Pass, he hits to the bench. Colville, zigs and zags. Interesting, I thought perhaps he'd try to get a shot away, decided to wait. Well, it opened up for a second, but it closed up real fast on him. Looking out of the corners, Caleb Toth through a double team. He's grabbed. There's going to be a penalty coming to Montreal. Then they hack him as well. So it was a little bit of a slow reaction after Caleb took that shot. The rules changed now. It used to be a dead ball on a delayed penalty once the shot was taken. But now it's not until there's a possession. You see a holding call. The second time Caleb Toth has drawn a penalty from going to the net. You see two guys trying to take him. Oh, that's a, looks like a more of a high stick than a hold. Call whatever you want. Sean Parnell is going to the penalty box. And Toth has got to continue going to the net because good things are happening for his team when he does. A lot of running room here. Dig in. The moves here on the double oh. team. Oh, saved by Palador. You know, Prep Prep Chuck, Chuck undressed two members of the Express. He has looked great one-on-one. -on -one. He has just had no luck in close around the net. Palador's had his number. The defensive players have it. That was a one, like you said, that was a one-on-two. Moving the ball, the Express. They score. Top corner, Kaluski. Oh, hurts so good. That's three in a row for Kaluski. And he has taken uh, some late hits. That time wasn't as bad as before. But that's a tough one. Prepchuk had a good chance. Pollitor makes the save and up the floor. A little bit of an opening. Watch Kaluski finds that corner. That's the extra couple inches. Those extra three inches of net he found there. And he took another couple of hits right after. I said... Before. I don't think this is over with uh, the late hits on Kaluski. There'll, there'll be some retribution. If not today, Thursday, but my bet is today. It's all been Calgary, and it's all been Calgary in the box, and it's offensively been Montreal's Tracy Kaluski. The natural hat trick to begin the third quarter. He's now got five goals on the game. Yes, he's, he's looked very good. That over-the-shoulder goal was a beaut. And he doesn't mind. He, you know, that's the, the sign of good goal scorers. They'll score even though they know they're going to get crunched. They like scoring so much, they don't care. You see some guys, when they know they're going to get a big hit, they tighten up a little bit, sometimes don't catch the ball. Big scorers always take the hit. Cole Bill. In the corner. Swings high. The shot. Palador the save. Loose ball. Palador again. Long lead pass. Trying to get to it. Steve Penny. Bouncing. Calgary controls. Gentle little pass. Handle and Colville. Gets caught coming back the other way by Dowling. Has to turn back to the ball. Down low. Knocked down will be Calgary possession. 
7.02 left to play in the third quarter. Three goals by Kaluski has Montreal in charge. All right, it's first thing. With the Sony Mini Disc Walkman, you can record from the net. So wherever you go, your downloads go with you. His Mountain Dew in serious jeopardy, this generally harmless male will defend his domain with basic animal instinct. A fierce battle rages. Yet, in the end, to the victor go the spoils. Hey, man, how you feeling? Not bad. Until next time, do the do. Chris Hall of the Roughnecks has to find a way for his team to get 10 to get back in this game. And standing by, Roger Millions with the owner of the Roughnecks. All right, Rob, thanks very much. Brad Bannister's done an awful lot of work for a lot of months here, and I don't know whether you're that happy with the score, Brad, but it's a great crowd at the Saddle Dome, and it's a wonderful way to kick off your franchise. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, I think there's almost 10,000 here right now, and, you know, if you stay out of the penalty box, maybe we'll be able to put on a better show. So now it's the time to concentrate on your team. What's your team got to do here to get back into it with a quarter and a half left? Well, we've got a bunch of big gunners. There we go right now. Um, they've got to start playing to their caliber. There's the level. Right All now. Right. So All right, Brad, listen, congratulations for everything you've done and good luck here. Yep, thanks a lot. Brad Bannister of the Calgary Roughnecks. This has been another Bolson X Work bench report. And Montreal trying to make it work. They score. Huge amount of time for Bruce Codd. Hey, Roughnecks fans. As it pays off. And this is what we talked about earlier on, getting back very early in the game. This is what the factor was. And you see, they're slowing the change. Four on three. You see the Calgary defender just running back from the bench. But Montreal has managed to execute every play like this that they've had a chance. A slow change. They're making Calgary pay for it. That's Bruce Codd's second goal of the game. And he the other thing with Montreal is their defensive players have good offensive touch. That was Bruce Kai. He's just basically playing backdoor on defense. That's his second goal of the game. 20 to 9, Montreal. Montreal again on the power play because of the disadvantage to the Calgary Roughnecks after roughing up Kaluski. Oh, that ball Almost. took a Montreal bounce. Frizzell standing, waiting, and it kind of skittered backwards. Too far for Scott Frizzell again. He falls down, tripped on the turf, and hurt his knee. His knee kind of jammed on the seam just ahead of him. Frizzell turned, and his knee kind of buckled. So will they attend to Scott Frizzell? Let's take a timeout. The Express 20, the Roughnecks 9. You're watching National Cross Action on Rogers Sportsnet. It orders pizza. It has an FM stereo so you can listen to music while waiting for pizza. It two-ways friends to come over for pizza. It has voice-activated dialing so you can order more pizza. Pizza. Without putting down your pizza. The Motorola V.120. Enjoy it with pizza. Can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Every day of my life, I work till I ache my bones. At the end, At the end of the day, I take home my hard earned pay. Oh, on my own. Hi everybody, I'm Leif Pedersen. Throughout the weekend on Sports Central, I'll be in studio offering my in-depth analysis on this year's Grey Cup. I'll tell you who's hot, who's not, and there may be some surprising predictions on Sports Central. Today's third quarter was brought to you by Dodge. Grab life by the horns.
John Frizzell limped off the floor. He'll be attended to. Not put any pressure on the knee. Nice interception by Calgary. Montreal, though, takes it back. Kaluski. Somebody's got and a penalty. A penalty. Here. Looks like it might be Montreal this time. Teddy Dowling is going to the penalty box. Strange to say, down by 11 goals with 20 minutes and 44 seconds left in this second half. Plenty of time if Calgary can get on a run. Well, well, they can use the power play now. You're absolutely right. I, I mean, I won't lie, they need some breaks. But I've seen this happen many times. Montreal penalty is the number 16, Ted Dowling. Power plays are sometimes the breaks you need. Prepchuk has it knocked away. Comes out to Palador. Palador leads it out. Montreal. Crosby. Throws it and then heads to the bench. Hiltz. Oh, comes look at back this. and look out. Pratt knocks oh. down. Scott four. That's the old sneak out of the penalty box play. Pratt went straight to the ball carrier. Every player gets that once in a while. You come out of the penalty box, you catch somebody not paying attention. It is a Calgary power play now. They're late to get their fifth guy on here. Shot comes in off the end. Glass, they take the rebound and score. Oh. That is what they needed, Prep Chuck. Yeah, Prep Chuck, Johnny on the spot. You see the big shot again by Caleb Toth. Prep Chuck just picks it up, puts it in. The first time he's been lucky in close. He's had a hard time on Polidor. Goes in, he scored a goal earlier on from outside. Once again, Caleb Toth. Things happen when he goes to the net. Montreal takes penalties. When he takes shots, if he doesn't score, somebody's getting a rebound. He's got to shoot a lot for Calgary to, to be successful. And Calgary picks one up. And I think Calgary's still been perfect on the power play. Six for six, is it? Yeah, they keep using it, so if they can get some power play activity going. Ted Dowling takes a little bit of a shot to the head, and he's going to get a penalty here, probably for goaltender interference. There you see Dowling, like, he likes to go to the net. This is a new rule. You hit the goalie on a play like that, you get a penalty. And the more I think about it, at first I didn't like this rule, but I'm starting to like it. And the reason being is that offensive guys really didn't care about what happened to the goalie as they go through the net. Now they have to be careful. And they make it work. Two straight goals by the Roughnecks. Oh, Chris Panos looked good on this one. He's really developed into a great shooter. This is what you call a quick stick in lacrosse. Very much like your one-timer in hockey. The best offensive players haven't watched. You're going to see as Panos gets this ball. They move it around a bit. And watch when he gets it this next time. Right in. Beautiful. And, and it's the same as, a, like I said, a one-timer in hockey. The reason it works is because the goalie has to play out and respect the shot. Once he's out, the quick stick guy has an empty net if he uses that quick stick. Panos gets his second goal of the game. Coming in now, Kaluski dishes off. Shot scores! Talk about responding, Peter Locke. Set up by Kaluski. This is one thing that Montreal's managed to do every time Calgary gets a bit of momentum, starts getting the crowd back into it. Montreal seems to come back with a little heartbreaker. Nice backhand flip pass. The defense probably could have played him a little tougher on that. He had too much time, Peter Locke, to wind up and take a shot. His first goal of the season and the game. Parnell comes in, shot saved by King. Goes back up. Colville. Takes in, up high, swings off. Colville shot. Commodore makes the save. Commodore, Kai. 
Cobb flips it ahead. Heads for the bench. Amy Kane. Kane looks, turns away from the double team, backs off, waits for a little help. Giles now digs towards. Coming in, it's in the crease. Possession for Calgary. 21-11 the score, 302 left. Alexander rumbles down the floor. Pass off, shot off the end boards. Loose ball scooped up by the Roughnecks. Saved by Palador, he didn't see it. Loose ball now to Palador. Worked off the boards. Oh, look, look at this. Look at this long lead. Here comes Montreal King. Can't stop oh, it. Oh, Joey Hill. Hill. Joey Hilt shows why he's been one of the top scorers in Canadian lacrosse in the last 10 years. Wait till you see this subtle little move that he puts on Matt King. Now, here's another nice pass by Polidor. We talked about the stick he has. But watch Joey Hilt put on this little move, forehand. The last second he puts on a little move, brings it over to the short side. Scores like that make it look very easy. But believe me, it's not easy for everybody. A little extra room, too, now this season at extra three inches, and Hiltz went to the corner. Lock. Hiltz from Peterborough gets a second goal of the game. Ted Dowling slowly goes into Calgary territory. 15 left on the shot clock, dances around, waits low, overhandled the ball, lost it, got a back shot, bounces wide. Cable coming back. Cable looks over his shoulder, trying to get some help. Cable backing up, shot comes in, and shot not able to come in, trying to handle the ball. Cable takes possession again. Puts it down low. Now, far side shot, hits oh. an ankle on the way through. Boulder. That hit Scott Forbes right on the ankle. That's got to hurt. Right in front. Ball scooped up over the shoulder. Panos. He didn't know that was going. Panos takes the extra shot and then an extra shot return as the Montreal. And now oh, we've got a strap go. going. And everybody's coming and wailing away. The rough bits holding oh, up. That's Parnell, but it looks like Forbes is going to go with somebody here, too. And Toth waited. Now we've got a little more as frustration goes. Forbes is getting ready to go. Campbell tries to get in. Got Campbell and Parnell. Hiltz is there. Toth heads to the penalty box while Forbes is wrestling. That's Brian Campbell, isn't it? Can't see what Brian Campbell, Brian Campbell would have been on offense there. Well, he swung in to grab a sweater. I think he went from offense to being involved. Well, we talked earlier about Tracy Kaluski taking some late shots. Probably the two guys on Montreal that are best at this kind of thing are Sean Parnell and Scott Forbes. Parnell's already gone for a seat. Here's Rob DeSormo. Here's Ryan Campbell coming back along with Scott Forbes. Oh, look, it's an equipment sale in Calgary. <laughs> you seen the guy in the mail room? Oh, talk about buns of steel. Oh. Come to mama, big boy. <laughs> Tostitos, chips, and salsa. Dig in. Let loose. Mr. Fletcher, Mr. Smith, heads at Swinney's Chicken Bacon Swiss, tails at Swinney's Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger. Heads. Caught in the air. Uh, tails. Heads. Heads. No, no, heads. Heads. No, I mean tails. Can't decide between Wendy's delicious new chicken bacon Swiss and Wendy's delicious new bacon Swiss cheeseburger? Each topped with hickory smoked bacon and processed Swiss? Try them both. It's win-win. Hey, fry man, over here. Here you go. For girls and boys, it's a fact. In every Wendy's kids' meal, Grinch toys are back. Climb every mountain. Yamaha. 
Omaha's ultimate ATV sale. 7.9% financing and a whole lot more. See dealer for details. His Mountain Dew in serious jeopardy, this generally harmless male will defend his domain with basic animal instinct. A fierce battle rages. Yet in the end, to the victor go the spoils. Hey man, how you feeling? Not bad. Until next time, do the do. You know, it's tough to find a good location in Calgary because right now the Express and the Roughnecks are taking up residence in the penalty box, and this is how it happened. And this is just a little bit of a late hit, a bit of escalation. You knew tempers were high to begin with. You see Forbes and Caleb Toth get going, and Toth shows some skills Ooh. that I didn't know he had. But Toth also, after he wrestled Parnell, who rattled his right side of his head against the boards, Toth held up on well, him. Well, he did hold, hold up. Once Parnell was down, he didn't swing anymore. But Caleb Toth, he's a great scorer. But Look at the mouse on that. Well, that's not a mouse. That's a mountain. <laughs> yeah. And I guess if you play four years in the Western Hockey League, you learn a thing or two. And that's what Caleb Toth, not only is he a great lacrosse player, played in the Western Hockey League for four years, but he, he did show some restraint there, too. I mean, Parnell was down. He could have continued, and he held up. Well, off goes Scott Forbes. Now, there are bodies exiting left and right. Maybe Roger Million, you could straighten us out. All right, Rob. Well, I can give you as much as I can. I see Chris Pano scratching his head. He's wondering why he's been thrown out of the game. He's been thrown out of the game. Ryan Campbell has been thrown out as well. So two ejections as far as the Roughnecks are concerned. You can tell by the bench they're absolutely confused why it's happened. They're not sure. Again, they'll try to work that out. But two men are gone from this contest, Panos and Campbell at this point. Thanks, Roger. We saw Forbes head to the dressing room as well. Parnell is still sitting in the Montreal penalty box. And he's with... He's got company. Could be Hiltz, because Hiltz was also... No, it's Harrison and Parnell in one penalty box. Take a look at the breakdown of the two rosters here. Yeah, here you see some of the experienced guys that have played in this league pretty much even. And you can see that Montreal is basically an Eastern team and Calgary's Western team. 14 guys on Calgary played in the West and almost vice versa in Montreal. All OLA, OLA guys. They got a few Western guys who were playing in the OLA. More bodies going in. Hiltz has now got out of the penalty box to join Harrison and Parnell. Here you see Joey Hiltz getting involved, and he's he's not a fighter. He's just trying to hold on to a man here. There's Panos and Forbes. Scott Forbes and Panos. The, the thing that often see, happens healthy. Now, Look at healthy. Just going, why me? That's right. He's, don't put me in that penalty box. He said, but you see Scott Forbes trying to take the mask off. The panels there. Prep Chuck. And out of all this, it looks like Calgary's got a power play. Prep Chuck swings away from the board. Up high. Ball movement. Now the shot saved by Palador. He's been a definite difference in the game. Long. Right up the board, in front of the bench. Dowling, dancing around, final minute of the third quarter, 22-11. And you see the shots on net, 51 to 44. They score, moving around, Jason Crosby. Bounced one in, his fourth. And a shorthanded effort. And we just shot, saw the shots a while ago were not that indicative of the score, but Montreal has managed to make the most of their opportunities here. You see Teddy Dowling finds him. The defense let up just a little bit. Jason Crosby, I'm sure that's a bit of a surprise for Montreal that he'd have four goals at this point. He is a good, good all-round player, a bit of offense and defense but they're not expecting numbers like this from him. It's always a bonus when guys chip in, defensive guys. 
Trying to get set. Minute left on the power play for Calgary. It's the second shorthanded goal for Montreal. Every time it looks like Calgary's about to get something going. Montreal counters, and there's another good stop by Palador. Montreal goal. Another penalty for Montreal. Slash coming up. So now opportunity sits here for Calgary. And number 27, Pierre Lott. Turning and finding a seat in a very crowded penalty box is MacArthur. There you're going to see a one-handed slash by MacArthur. To the side, they score! Colville, power play goal. Colville's second goal of the game. He's got Caleb Coates in the penalty box. A big power play gun. Rob Colville, who owns a gym in New Westminster, BC. Lock, lead pass, saved by King. Turning back, power play for Calgary. Moving in, and time runs out in the third quarter. 23-12 right now, the Express leading the Roughnecks and LL Action on Rogers Sportsnet. John Sherry's lucky 13. Hey, no bad luck here. You're going to love it. It orders pizza. It has an FM stereo, so you can listen to music while waiting for pizza. It two ways friends to come over for pizza. It has voice-activated dialing, so you can order more pizza. Pizza. Without putting down your pizza. The Motorola V.120. Enjoy it with pizza. Mr. Fletcher, Mr. Smith, Ed's a 20's chicken bacon Swiss, Gail's a 20's bacon Swiss cheeseburger. Heads. Caught in the air. Oh, uh, tails! Heads! Heads! No, no, heads! Heads! No, I mean tails! Can't decide between Wendy's delicious new chicken bacon Swiss and Wendy's delicious new bacon Swiss cheeseburger? Each topped with hickory smoked bacon and processed Swiss? Try them both. It's win-win. Hey, fry man, over here! Here you go. For girls and boys, it's a fact. In every Wendy's kids' meal, Grinch toys are back. Can anybody find me somebody to love? He works hard. Every day of my life, I work till I ache my bones. At the end, At the end of the day, I take home my hard-earned pay oh, on my own. Somebody, 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 somebody. can anybody John Sherry's lucky 13. Hey, no bad luck here. You're going to love it. It's crunch time brought to you by Doritos, the loudest crunch. And this crunch starts from the goal out. Yep. Save by Polidor. Big save, and we'll look at this stick. And this is, you're going to see a lot of skills on this play by Tracy Kaluski. Finally with his shot. Oh, it's a beauty, but then he pays the price. Campbell levels him. That's Toad a double held crunch. Him up. Yeah. Crunch on the scoreboard and Kaluski. 23-12 entering the fourth quarter. Montreal. Power play for the Roughnecks. Ball movement. Prepchuk. Back up top again. Wolder. The double team. Back down low. Prepchuk. Shot saved by Malador. And the rebound was scooped up by Locke. Locke starts out. Under pressure, Dust dumps it over the mid way mark of the floor, and Alexander's being held by Locke. Prep truck again, dumps it off. Pratt to the side. Valador just got a piece of it. Still Calgary ball. Pratt scores again. They just can't seem to beat the Express Netminder. Blowing it down again. Back up the top. Boulder shot scores. Pick that corner. Oh. This is just a great shot. 
they weren't giving them much either. You watch the defenders of Montreal with the sticks up as they should be, not letting them step in. But this is just a perfect shot. The top corner there, you see the wind up. Once in a while, just got to give credit to the shooter. It's a great shot. And sometimes that, that's all you can do. You can play your defense and make a great play. It's a good goal. Calgary comes back again. Saved by Palador. Loose ball. God pushes it aside. Dumps it off. Aiken. Little foot to Kaluski. Kaluski back to Aiken. Didn't work. Down low. Nice. King stayed all the way with Palador. Oh. Look who's there, Amy Keynes. And that's the story of this game. Every time Calgary scores a goal, Montreal comes right back and usually gets two. And, and this is just a loose ball. You're going to see nice play. Dowling doing what he does best, a quick release. But Calgary should have had this ball. Amy Keynes is all over it. Amy Kane played for Terry Sanderson this summer. Last year he played for Columbus. Didn't have big stats, just four goals, but he's blossoming. Scored a lot of points this summer for Brampton. Went to the Man Cup, had a big Man Cup series, even though they lost. He reminds me a little bit of Toast, the way he plays. All lanky. Goes to the net. Hard. Dowling, and it picks! Look at the Dowling dive work again. Talk about somebody going to the net hard. Holy cow. His fourth goal of the game, Ted Dowling. And I talked about earlier how he's much more dangerous when he doesn't have the ball, but tonight he's shown that he doesn't mind going one on one. Yet, he can show any one of his goals. He's, how many goals has he scored like this, Rob? Oh, all of them. They all, exactly, they all look the same. And, I would think that when Montreal watches this game later, they're going to come back next week and make sure not to give Ted Dowling the book on him. And they know him too. Chris Hall coaches him in the summer. He was a leading scorer for the Western Lacrosse Association for Victoria. Ben, ben intercepted, neatly picked off. Oh, nice little move there. Crosby. Here comes Crosby. And across as a man all along, they score! In a game like this, they left them all alone, and Montreal, Calgary gets one, Montreal keeps adding more. And Zach Aiken scores a goal for Montreal, but this is uh, a big play by Crosby, who's had a strong game. Made an interception, beat a man. And passes it to Zach Aiken. Another one of Terry Sanderson's favorite guys. He played for Brooklyn Senior B last summer. And Terry said he was very impressed with him in the training camp. Aiken, the first goal of the game at 17 of the fourth quarter. 26 13 the score. Once again, the Montreal goal. Let's join Roger Million for the man who's been on the score sheet quite a bit. All right, no doubt about that, Rob. Tracy Kaluski, you have been on fire, and basically your team has as well. Why had things gone so well for the Express here at the Saddle Dome today? Everybody contributed. You know, we got 15 guys, and every guy has done something. You know, we, a couple of day, couple of weeks ago, we went along and said what everyone role, everyone's role was. Everyone said what their role was, and everyone's fulfilling their job tonight, and just everyone contributing. Tracy, i got to ask you about the brouhaha that was down in the third quarter. You were involved. You got a big shot in the ribs. First of all, how are you feeling, and how do you think your team's responded since everyone got so involved out on the floor? No, it's uh, the response is unbelievable. You know, and it's just payback. You know, they're going to go after me and hit me dirty like that. Our guys are going to go out, and we're going to play physical as well. But just for myself, it was just uh, knocked the wind out of me. Uh, I just wanted to stay down, get a little breather. That's about it. Tracy, great match for you. Thank you. Yeah. Tracy Kaluski, another Molson Export bench report. Chris Hall has to wonder what he can do. Every time Calgary gets one, Montreal comes back with a cup. Yeah, and you know, one of the stories of the game here, Montreal's got four guys that just play defense. Zach Aitken, Bruce Codd, Brad MacArthur, Sean Parnell. 
They've got one, two, three, four, five goals between them. They're defensive players. And they've flopped goalies again for Calgary. Collins is back in, and giving King a breather now. And you're right, at this point, it's just give him a breather. Behind. Katanchik tried to get something going. Loose ball, scooped up. Bruce Cott. Pass knocked away. Controlled now by Hillier. Alexander by himself. Alexander, his pass, shot. Panos makes the save. Check that, that was Polidor. Coming back. The Express, Kaluski. Looking down low. Delts. Oh. inside all by themselves that was Dean right. Harrison nobody followed Harrison I think Dean was shocked that he had so much time he could have probably backstepped and had a better angle on that Alexander moves in tries to get a shot away waits up high swings it down low and he heads to the bench the net, in the line, coming in, the shot, saved by Palador again, by Kilbride. Kilbride's had a good game, the rough mix. Tracy Kaluski made a good point, he said that everyone on his team knows their role and accepts it, and that's part of the key, and I'm sure after this game, Calgary might be talking about what all the roles are. Shot scores! Now that might be, no, they are going to call it because coming through, Amy Keynes was knocked down in the crease. He was walking up, Collins let up enough that he may have been screened by the player leaving the crease. And another stretch of Montreal goals, four in a row makes it 27 to 13. That was Peterborough's Joey Hilt scoring his third goal. Yeah, you see Amy Keynes going down there in the crease. And yeah. Provided a good screen as he got up. We're gonna see, oh, see that's a little shot there. <laughs> but Calgary. Ten. Montreal ball. Once by MacArthur trying to find some room. Shot comes in. Palador the save. Played five minutes. There we go, guys. Got something right in front of the bench. Is now MacArthur's got his man down. Oh, the third man in, too. I That's the Zormo all at. over him. Now you could bet whoever MacArthur got, I bet you it's one of their finesse players. I think it may have been Katanjic. Could have been Katanjic, and then DeZormo came over top. And this is still payback. Calgary's trying to get even again. Katanchik was at the bottom. We'll sort it out when we return. Molson Export, National Lacrosse. That's Brad MacArthur in the penalty box. He got mixed up with Todd Katanchik. Rob DeZormo came over top. And he's in the box. Let's take a look at our action around the net and the speedy drive of the game brought to you by Speedy Auto Service. And speedy, you're somebody. This is the goal that made it 25-13, but I think it could have been any one of Ted Dowling's goals. He had a few goals that looked just like this. This is his favorite move. When he goes on one-on-one, -on -one, this is the way he always goes. He goes to the crease, takes that dive. Well, there's the Stroop swoop and the Dowling dive. Now the net's a little bigger, but and you can dive across it, but I think Calgary next week, when they play Montreal, they've got to take that away from him. Force Teddy Dowling to go up high. Now 
Now there is uh, a gathering and the officials trying to sort it out. This is what happened. Look at MacArthur with his man, Katanchik, right in front. And when MacArthur and Katanchik got involved, DeSormo, there he came over top. Let's check in with Roger Millions. All right, thanks very much, Rob. Caleb told us it's been a wild one here. I know it's not the way you want it on the scoreboard. This one really has developed into a very physical affair. Yeah, it has. You know, we're uh, we're getting frustrated. Um, they're beating us uh, transition. They're beating us to loose ball. They're pretty much just outplaying us. So we're getting a little frustrated, and that's when uh, stuff happens. Okay, what good is coming out of it right now? Obviously, there's things you have to work on here in the final quarter to get ready for next Thursday night back in Montreal. Well, I think we've uh, done well on our power play. We've scored a whole bunch of power play goals, but uh, we got a lot to work on. You know, it's the first time. Uh, we've all played together as a team, and, and you can tell it's it's our first game. All right, all right, Caleb. Thanks very much. Thank you, Caleb Toth, another Molson Expert bench report. Nine Calgary power play goals this afternoon. And Rob, we went to the practice yesterday for Calgary, and they were telling us that it's really the first time that they've been able to get everybody together for a practice. Got a lot of guys commuting from Vancouver, and this is where Montreal has an advantage. They practice in Ontario, but a lot of the guys play from Ontario. They all travel by train down for the games, but they've been together many times already. Now this is a game of runs. It can be similar to basketball. One team starting to roll and picking up a lot of points. And that's been the difference for Montreal. Calgary scores on the power play. There's their 10th power play goal. Ten goals in a game is not bad, but you, they've got 14, but you hate giving up as many as they have. This play is very similar to what Kaluski did earlier on. You wind up for the big shot, hit the guy who cuts to the center. That's Boulder, throws a pick. Boulder threw a pick on the top guy. It looked like they were trying to set up, set up Toast for the big shot, but when he stepped around, Boulder went to the net. His third. Nice goal. Second in this quarter. 27-14. As Toad said, that's one positive they can take out of this game is all these power play goals. Very good on the power play count. So Wolder's third. Caleb Toad may not be getting a lot of goals, but he's in on a lot of assists. Kilbride, who's been busy too, also picking up an assist. Less than 10 to play, fourth quarter. Here's a breakaway for Calgary. They score! Colville! This is the first time today that they've been able to catch, Calgary's been able to catch Montreal on the fast break. Only the second time in the game Calgary's put together a couple of goals in a row, third time rather. You see Colville came right off the bench, caught Montreal on the change. Calgary's been burned by this a few times themselves. And I guess they're starting to learn. Going to it from the bench, the huge part of this game for Austin Crossley. Colville with a hat trick. Contact, I believe, with Collins. Penalty coming up. Will be if there be an extra one? See if it up. goes two. I don't know. Toast gave a late hit. Trotting off. It looks like. Is that Amy Keynes? It is Joe Hilt. Joey Hilt. Here we're going to see. Let's see. Okay, I think you sent the wrong guy to the box. They sent the wrong man. <laughs> it should have been Peter Locke. Yeah. Oh, we get to see this power play gets the practice. They've been doing well. Saved by Palador. Loose ball in front. He's got Goes a heavy back shot. Eight thirty left to play. Fourth quarter. Twenty-seven fifteen in favor of the Express. Come on, Calgary! It's a rough next power play. Get on it. Alling. 
Time running out, seven, six seconds left in the shot clock. Turning, shot goes wide. Calgary starts back. Power play again for the Roughnecks. Prep check up top to Toad. Ball movement now, Calgary. Toad moves in, a heavy shot bounces high Whoa. to the Raptors. That hit the lighting grid at the top of the Big Grove Saddle Dome. I thought we were going to have to run over to get that ball. Rob. Can't walk. <laughs> Coming back is Bruce Codd to Kaluski. Kaluski, five goals in the game. Until you're watching him, Kaluski steps in and turns away. Kaluski flips it over his shoulder. Dean Harrison digging in behind the goal. Collins takes control. 7-10 left to play, fourth quarter. 12 goals the difference. Coming back, Calgary. Trying to set the power play up. Final 10 seconds left of the power play. Toth up top to Walder. Walder passes off. Ball movement is knocked away. Comes right back to the roughneck. Scooped up quickly by Locke. And trying to hit the breaker. That was Hiltz coming out of the penalty box. Oh. Collins a long way up. And he throws it into the crowd. And Joey Hiltz was drooling all over that one. Just coming out of the penalty box as his team got the ball. The pass was just off a little bit. I was talking about this being a game of runs. Tied at three in the first quarter. Montreal scored seven in a row to take a 10-3 lead. In the third quarter, Montreal opened up with four straight goals to begin the third quarter. Then got another stretch of four straight goals in the fourth quarter. So Calgary never had a chance to really get back into it because of those runs. Our next game, it is the rematch. And have you thought this afternoon was frisky? Next Thursday night at the Molson Center, should be interesting. 6.30 Eastern Time, the Roughnecks at Montreal, 4.30 in the Alberta area. And a chance for the Montreal fans to get their first look at their hometown express. They've received some good coverage in the newspaper, and now they score again, Amy Kane. The 43rd goal of this game. Most of our viewers are used to watching the Toronto Rock, the best defensive team in the league, who averaged eight goals against per game. Last year, Buffalo, the most offensive team, averaged 18 goals offensively. And here we see these numbers just blowing that out of the water. Amy Kane scores his third. And you know, the, the nets are bigger, but that's that's not everything. Hillier, the dish! Oh. Katanchik, the finish. Sorry, you're going to have to change that. That's 44 goals. <laughs> I can't count higher than 50, so. And this is a nice feed, and Katanchik is going to the net, and we talked about the quick stick earlier on. It's a nice play. Polidor has to come out to play that passer. Quick stick. Nice now Calgary has to be excited about their offense. But defensively from goaltender out, it's got to be back to the drawing board. But it's probably served as a good eye opener for them. Kaluski swings one wide, gets the ball right back, oh. dives in, what a pretty play by the Montreal captain. Oh. You know, we didn't get to see Kaluski that much last year playing in Columbus, and he's better than I thought he was. Gets his own rebound, watch these moves, nice stick. Oh, Montreal fans are going to be treated to this guy. Six goals this afternoon. Twenty-nine, sixteen. Loose ball. 
And out comes Collins a long way, but it's whistled down. It will be a possession. Calgary. And the penalty's coming up. Oh, and a drop stick is Caleb Toth. He's a squandered opportunity as they were in the offensive zone, but they do get the power play. This is Parnell is going to the penalty box. We'll have to look in the record book here to find out what's the most goal Watch scored in, in a game. I would guess that we were close right now. We'll have to check that out. Calgary with 10 power play goals of their 16. Come on, Calgary, it's a Walder, shot bounces. Walder gets it again. Comes in, shot, saved by Palador, rolls away. Digging forward was Peter Locke. He's got it again. Oh! Kyle and Locke oh. is crunched! Coming back though, Collins makes the save on Amy Keynes. The penalty will go to the Roughnecks. Looks like Peter Locke wants to have a little talk with Chris Pratt. And that was definitely a high stick. We're going to have a look at it. I honestly don't think it was intentional. Pop the noggin right off it. That's when your only defense is you tell the referee his strap must have been loose. He gets five minutes for that one, too. This, that's another new rule in this league. High sticking, it's five minute major. I would have to think that would just loosen your chin strap too, a shot like that. Yeah, yeah. Chin strap was loose. It wasn't loose before you hit me. There may not be this much scoring in the Grey Cup. <laughs> and Calgary's You're involved right. in that. Power play. Five minute power play to end the game. They are four still. Coming back. The Express, very patient. Digging in behind the goal, coming out, trying to get a shot away, oh. saved by Collins. Nifty little move, too. Nice backhand. Ted Dowling's been absolutely dangerous every time he's on the floor. Hillier heads back. Tries to move in. They ball movement. Little flip. Didn't get the shot away. Over the shoulder. Shot to the oh. side. Hillier misses the open net. Shot comes in. Palador the save. Calgary had an opportunity to get one more. Starting it back. Crosby. Flip it away, head to the bench. Now, this game's had a bit of nastiness in it, so I'm sure Montreal won't mind running up the score as much as they can. Kaluski with a shot towards the net. Hiltz picks up the loose ball. And a fresh clock to the Express. Ten seconds left in the penalty to the Express's Sean Parnell, and then they go on the power play. Door is open for Parnell. Out he comes. Three minutes and 38 seconds on the power play for Montreal, and they're up by 13. Flip, the shot scores! That looks like Dean Harrison scores. He's got a few today. That's his third goal to go along with three assists. The shooting has been terrific for Montreal. Another point for Kaluski. And they're still on the power play. 11.41, the time of the goal. Harrison making it 30 to 16. Well, coming in, we knew it'd be high scoring. We thought it would be a little tighter, though, than a 14 goal spread. Well, you know what? We heard uh, Chris uh, Hall talking earlier on, and he did say his offense, he'd have good offense. He didn't come out to say his defense was weak, but you almost got the impression he wasn't as confident in his defense. And I, and I spoke to Ryan Campbell, who sort of 
the way the defense has been slagged a bit by the local media, I took it as a bit of a challenge, but they they're definitely have to regroup. But I don't think you can blame the players totally that the, the goaltending has not been good. I don't know what they can do about that in the short term. Back Kaluski over the shoulder with Hen Hock. Hen Hock moves in, his pass intended for Matt Giles. Giles now has it in the corner to the side, and look oh. who's there. Oh. Ted Dowling, another power play goal, number 31 for the Montreal Express. And this train is rolling. Kaluski's been fantastic this game. He helped them get the loose ball, but Ted Dowling has not been too far behind doing what he does best. Last year, Dowling had an off year with only 14 goals. He scored over 200 goals in this league. He's played 10 years with his high 45 two years ago. Five goals so far today. I'll say he might catch his 14 goals in a couple weeks. Tracy Kaluski will go rocketing to the top of the NLL scoring stat. What's he at now, Rob? About a million points <laughs> by my rough count. <laughs> and Hawk to the far side. The shot comes in and scores! Oh. Skips in and Harrison gets another power play goal for the Express. That's his fourth. And that is ending the power play because of the mercy rule. There is a rule, three goals and the penalty expires. Now who's in that now? Is that Matt King or Derek Collins? He was screened on it this still one. Collins, yeah. You saw him gesture with his arms that he couldn't see it. Coming back, saved by Polidor. Montreal goal, number 21, Dean Harrison. Assist number 88, Jason Hedlock. Number 49, Amy Kane. Let's draw it, Roger Millian. Rob, I can tell you this, the Montreal Express can't wait for the rematch next Thursday. All are talking about it. Brad McCarthy, who's out of the game, said to me, he said they are ready for the game on Thursday against Calgary. They're maybe way up by 16 at this point, but they can't wait to get them back uh, at the Molson Center on Thursday night. Well, if they have this kind of offensive output, Roger, fans in Montreal are going to love it. They haven't seen lacrosse like this since the Quebecois. Coming in, shot saved by Palador. That hurt off the shoulder. And Palador is going to try to move that off. It looked like that hurt. Here, Mentioned the Ke Quebecois, the old National Lacrosse League. Fourth quarter is brought to you by Yamaha Motors, but you want the best. And by Canon, leaders in digital photography. Astonish yourself. Rob, you mentioned the Quebecois of the old National Lacrosse League. That was in the 70s. They had teams from Quebec and Montreal. Coach Terry Sanderson played for the Quebec team. As Calgary scores another goal, I think it was, was that Kilbride or Colville? Colville getting his fourth. Let's see. Another power play. Tough to say you could take something positive out of a game that you're losing 32 to 17, but power play. All right, well, 10 of 12. Colville's fourth. Rob Colville. And it is 32 17. Ball goes back to Palador. Immediately following the game, it is Hockey Central Saturday. Trigger, Scott Morrison, Nick Caprios, and Hawk. Minute remaining the in the fourth quarter. quarter. Express not content to let up. Moving in, shot, score again! Oh. Ted Dowling's fifth. Ball Ravery went way off. Three violation, violation before the ball went in. Well, it wasn't Ted Dowling in the crease, I can tell you that. But maybe that was for the earlier goals he scored. Dowling's looking around going, what do you mean they're taking it away? It's a retroactive crease violation for his first goal. <laughs> Coming in at Prep Chuck. Oh, a dive. Side was shut down. 
Coming up with the loose ball, Calgary in behind. Krepchak couldn't get the quick shot away. Loose ball, though, scooped up by Caleb Toth. Has it chopped away by Henhock. Toth has it again. Steers it back. It's controlled by Bruce Kahn. Kahn has been very solid. Of course, you could say that right now about anybody on the Montreal Express. You're right. 32-17, time running out. And this will end the game. And Ted Dowling, who had a goal take it away, will be named the Molson Export Player of the Game. Ten points for Dowling. Today's Player of the Game brought to you by Molson Export at X today. National Lacrosse League action has been brought to you by Molson Export at X today. It was the Express Runaway Train, 32-17. Express beat the Redneck, the Roughnecks. Replay next Thursday. For Roger Millions and Brian Shedd, I'm Rob Folds. Take care, everybody.